Hello, here is a specimen of the proximal colon. So this is the ascending colon and the cecum and the terminal ileum. Uh, we can recognize this because we can just about make out the appendix here. This is the region of the ileocecal valve. And let me rotate this and we can just see that this part is the appendix. The main region of abnormality is really in the cecum and the ascending colon. In this instance, the terminal ileum is fairly normal. What we can see here are ulcers and an irregular mucosal appearance. In these regions, it appears that the mucosa is somewhat raised in some areas and uh, depressed in other areas. And this is what we call a cobblestone appearance. This region, uh, there is a full thickness defect, and this is because a section has been taken out for microscopic examination. We can also see that there are other areas that appear fairly normal in between the abnormal areas. And again, here is an area of ulceration, and this is a relatively normal mucosa. So the type of distribution is actually patchy, and we term these as skip lesions because there are areas in between the lesions that are skipped or relatively normal. So here is an example of a case of Crohn's disease or Crohn disease. It is one of the two major types of inflammatory bowel disease and typically it involves the terminal ileal region or the ileocecal region but it can also involve other parts of the bowel including just the colon alone. The other main entity among the inflammatory bowel diseases is ulcerative colitis and there are some key differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. First of all, in terms of the location, Crohn's disease often likes to situate itself in the ileocecal region. However, as mentioned, it can also involve uh, the colon alone, uh, but in a minority of cases. In ulcerative colitis, the colon is pretty much always involved and it tends to favor the left-sided colon, the region of the rectal sigmoid colon, but it can also involve the right-sided colon. Uh, Distribution-wise, in Crohn's disease, we can have skip lesions, meaning there can be normal mucosa in between abnormal areas, whereas in ulcerative colitis, um, usually when the colon is involved, the entire region is involved. So grossly, there are some key differences. The ulcers in Crohn's disease are rather deep and they can be fissuring almost like a vertical narrow ulcer rather than a broad shallow ulcer. The mucosa may have a cobblestone appearance because of uh, alternating normal and abnormal areas. And often the bowel wall itself can be quite thickened because of a combination of edema, inflammation, fibrosis, and the fibrosis can also give rise to strictures and obstruction. Because the ulcers tend to be deeper, there's also a chance of perforation with fistulation. And sometimes the mesenteric fat uh, tries to plug the areas of inflammation. So we get what we call creeping fat, which is the fat appearing to adhere to the cirrhosal surface. In contrast, in ulcerative colitis, the ulcers are more superficial, usually not going beyond the submucosa. And uh, we can also often see numerous pseudopolyps, which can even uh, appear similar to polyposis. This is because of the regenerating areas of mucosa in between the ulcerated areas. Microscopically, they share some common features. In both conditions, we would see some distortion of the crypts, crypt abscesses, so acute inflammation within the crypts and some sort of metaplasia. For example, in Crohn's disease, in the small bowel, we can see pseudopyloric metaplasia resembling a gastric antral type of mucosa. And in Crohn's disease, again, uh, the microscopy mirrors what we see on the cross. There are deeper ulcers, there may be perforation, fistula formation, and importantly, we can see non-caseating granulomas in the mucosa. In ulcerative colitis, again, what we see uh, pretty much reflects what is seen in the gross, and in general, we don't tend to get granuloma formation in ulcerative colitis. So to summarize, this is an example of the ileocecal region with the terminal ileum, the cecum, and the ascending colon. And the ascending colon is involved by a patchy process with some normal mucosa in between, and what we see are ulcers, 
and a cobblestone appearance in some areas of the mucosa. And this is an example of Crohn's disease.